Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's coverage here on location at AWS reInvent, AWS' annual conference. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE, part of our SuperCloud 5 special edition where we got on location, CUBE action, in studio in Palo Alto. Enjoy the next three, four days. We have tons of content, special reports on siliconangle.com, research, news, opinions. The battle for AI supremacy is the theme of the industry, and where generative AI is the hottest trend. We've got two great guests here, Narayan Bardwaj and Fred Worden here from VMware and AWS. VPGM of VMware Cloud on AWS, congratulations. And of course, commercial software systems at AWS, you guys have a partnership. Um, welcome to theCUBE. Great to be here, um, thank you. Thanks, thanks for coming on because um, VMware now part of Broadcom, division of Broadcom, I forget the official title, but it just closed last week. Um, you, we've had a lot of conversations with VMware on cloud. In fact, I remember the, when Andy Jassy launched with Pat Gelsinger in 2016, the, the cloud, we kind of were like, finally, the clarity around the cloud vision is here. It's been a great run, so congratulations on, the, on a successful partnership. Give us the update, what's going on with the partnership? I know the Broadcom thing's not really impacting at all, although Broadcom's got a customer of AWS, but still, what's the update with the VMware AWS relationship? Well, it's been a great industry-defining partnership when you were there in San Francisco many, many years ago. We've come a long way, but the business has been growing amazingly well. We have recorded some great growth in the past few years, uh, including the last few quarters as well. Where uh, you know the hybrid cloud uh, for enterprise workloads, for modern workloads, 26 regions around the world and U.S. public sector. We have seen some amazing growth actually in the public sector world as well, with 160 percent growth year over year in terms of uh, the customers and workloads we've been able to adopt. So we're very excited by the partnership, which continues forward with uh, a lot of great, you know, with our friendship with AWS and our combined customers and partners in this jointly engineered solution. Yeah. I mean, we always said the operators running vSphere, every enterprise pretty much has VMware, just adds some more products, Tanzu's got traction, so you know, great, great trajectory. On the AWS side, you guys are getting smaller, faster, cheaper on the silicon, um, networking's getting better, ultra, you have ultra platform, what was it called, ultra networking, I mean, you have all kinds of advancements at the infrastructure layer keep coming, we're going to see a lot here. They're not going to be announced tonight. Tonight will be announced, and then Adam Celestia's keynote tomorrow. Um, you're, you guys have been getting better too, so I mean, a lot going on there. What news do you guys have here for reInvent? Well, there's, uh, <laughs> there, there's a lot of news. Yeah. Uh, in fact, <laughs> so much news that it's hard to keep track of. Um, re related to VMware on AWS, we certainly have made some progress, and we have an announcement to make uh, on some hard work that we've been, been uh, tackling to improve uh, the flexibility of customers to move from on-prem to the cloud uh, with better sizing options in terms of a, a smaller size and better, better compute performance as well uh, with M7i uh, Metal 24XL, which uh, is, is a custom silicone that we've worked with uh, Intel on. It's 15% better uh, price performance and just compute performance than any other cloud. A provider as well. But what's really neat about this offering is that we've separated storage uh, from being on instance to FSX uh, NetApp on tap. Uh, so we can size storage and data is so critical in terms of really understanding how that works with new workloads that we can run on this uh, particular instance. So uh, pretty excited about that uh, coming out and uh, it'll be available in, in uh, uh, quite a few regions shortly, and Narayan yeah. can, can uh, yeah. explain a little bit more of what we do and what the other advantages are for this yeah, as well. Let's get to the benefits. I mean, I, I wrote on my post uh, that shipped last night, chips and models together. So you, you can now pair your, your infrastructure with what you're trying to do, like wine with dinner, like red wine with some steak, white wine with some fish. You know, this is where we're going. Custom built silicon is, 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 is it's, it's a thing, because you can match performance and get these use cases. What are the benefits you guys do with the storage? What's the, what's it mean for the customer? I get the performance on the chip side. What does this disaggregated storage mean for the customer? What's, the, what's in it for them? Yeah, I mean, I think for years we've been running this hyper-converged architecture with vSAN, as you very well know. I think what customers told us is, hey, it would be nice to dial up storage and compute independently to get an even better total cost of ownership when you're running in the public cloud with VMware Cloud and AWS. And so we've done exactly that. This is a complete decoupling of storage and compute. You can dial up your CPUs and your storage separately with different storage options, including VMware Cloud Flex Storage and the FSX with NetApp ONTAP as external storage options. So that uh, decoupling really gives customers a better cost model, yeah. enables customers to migrate workloads to the public cloud faster, cheaper, uh, so that's really exciting, yeah. uh, that sort of new architecture that we have defined. 
It's interesting, Fred, I want to get your thoughts on this because we're seeing a lot of this in the high performance computing area, this decoupling, disaggregation, memory is easy, you put a big bunch of memory pools together, you share it amongst a bunch of other different use cases or machines purpose built for things. This gives an optionality change as the world starts to go differently where you have diversity in the workloads. Mm -hmm. Okay, VMware is one use case. Yep. You guys are looking at a lot of customers, a lot of yep. diversity. Got some VMware here. I got some new net, net new gen AI going on. That's right. How important is this to the whole next gen workloads from a complexity standpoint, from a abstracting away the heavy lifting to the value of the customer? Well, in this particular case, it, it's so true that you can have acceleration, but that's only one portion of the equation. You have to have the system performance, whether it's EBS or your network performance, uh, uh, completely understood and, and modeled quickly and efficiently for your particular workload. This is one example of being able to do that uh, because we have better, better performance from a clock rate and we have the rest of the system as we look at the entire performance when you look at particular workloads. Explain that again, I want to just double click on that. System performance versus what performance, acceleration? Well, well, if you just look at one particular portion of the system, like an accelerated computer GPU, yeah. mm -hmm. okay? How fast you can get the data to that GPU and how fast that GPU can work across the entire system or a cluster is super important. Uh, it usually comes back to a couple things, both your network performance, but also your storage. And then tail latency is super important too. Um, what does tail you, latency well, mean? Well, how consistent are you in terms of the operations? Anytime you have, it's kind of like the old uh, book that was, you know, you can only hike as fast as the slowest person in your, in your party. Uh, and, and we know so, to do, you put that person in the front of the that's line. That's right, you put them in the front of the line so that everybody starts carrying their load, right? Well, you, it takes a lot of engineering work in the partnership yeah. between yeah. us to get that right. Uh, yeah. Because you know, the, the networking and the options that we have in terms of making sure it works well yeah. with where that data might be on-prem, yeah. as people are transitioning faster and faster to migrate, uh, that allows us to work wherever the data happens to be, but we can, we What I really like about this M7i architecture that we have is this four generation Intel AMX, advanced matrix extensions, mm -hmm. right, coming together with Intel, custom silicon, AWS, VMware mm -hmm. technologies coming together. It really creates what I call this pragmatic AI ML in the market. Mm -hmm where customers can run their existing enterprise workloads and their AI ML workloads side by side on the same cluster. And this is powerful because now with the new Intel capabilities, mm -hmm. uh, we have virtualized the instruction set for AMX. And that is now provided up through the virtual machine and the container stack. So all of the machine learning workloads, mm -hmm. whether you're doing any kind of data pipelining yeah. or, or you know, inferencing or testing or optimizations, you can really take advantage of that in this new architecture. So you have the best of both worlds with this uh, CPU-based AI ML use, use cases. It's interesting, it's almost as if um, the dream scenario came th through the industry with, with the whole AI craze because it's the perfect storm of timing. More compute, systems thinking around end-to-end, -end, not just you know, one point performance piece, um, and then the data being freely available. So the whole generative AI kind of speaks to what we've been trying to do for a decade yeah. in big data. Yeah. Okay, the networking's coming together. You got fast decoupled storage and memory. You got architect the system for the best possible scenario or and, workload. And, and make it easier for the developer, regardless of where the yeah. data is or the virtualization layer is, and, um, and then leverage new services that we, we're uh, releasing you know, monthly. One of the great things about VM, VMware Cloud and AWS is the ease of use for the operator, right? Yeah. The same model yeah. on-prem, same model in the public cloud with AWS. And so that continues forward, where you can have the workload side by side, and it's kind of like this multi-tenant yeah. environment, and you can get the best of both worlds. Well, I, I'll tell you, Narayan, I, you guys have done an amazing job, and we really appreciate you as being part of our super cloud uh, event series we're doing, because when we looked at your community, um, pre-Broadcom, um, there was an element of, I won't say not coolness, but like you have coolness with AWS, and that, that's helped with the cloud, but there was an era of, What's next for me as the VMware yeah. um, operator? What's my career look like? Am I going to be in Amazon or Azure? Or is multi-cloud going to be a thing? I really don't know that anyone had their hands on that. So you have this renaissance of the VMware ecosystem where there's VMUG or these XV experts out there yeah. where they see the super cloud paradigm coming where I get it, VMware is a big piece of the puzzle. It ain't, it's, I don't have to be just VMware, I can be cloud. Yeah. That's right. And I think, to me, that is a major success pers personally for VMware because the psychology is less 
uh, acquiescing to more engaged in your, in your customer base. And certainly with Amazon, the, the goodness that you guys bring to the table from a cloud native perspective and with Tanzu around the corner, how does this all tie together? Someone's looking at this, this equation of uh, VMware's cool with cloud, which I think is the case, super cloud. What's, what's next? What's, how does it come together from here? Yeah, I think we've been big believers in super cloud and we've worked with you for a long, long time now. And I think our multi-cloud mission carries forward, right, as a company, um, as a, you know, investing in areas like vSphere and VC, yeah. VMware Cloud Foundation and Tanzu mm -hmm. and many other things. So we continue forward yeah. that evolution of our stack towards this multi-cloud, yeah. super cloud model. I think we are also looking to harness all of the unique capabilities of a Nitro platform, for example, in <laughs> AWS, yeah, right? Yeah. So you've got to sort of be best of breed in terms of where you are yeah. and utilize those capabilities. So it's that really good marriage and that balance that we have in our portfolio that really excites customers. Nitro is a good, good trigger word there. I remember yeah. when that came out, like Dave Vellante and I were like, oh man, this Nitro, this, this is a direction. That was the beginning of the, see the infrastructure right. scale. Fred, I want to get your thoughts because you know, when, when a super cloud, most people think we talk about multi-cloud, that's actually not the case. Two, two reinvents ago, three reinvents ago, we observed a change in your ecosystem. We saw the rise of Snowflake, Databricks, Mongo. They have ecosystems on top of AWS. So we, we saw the rise of the transition from ISV to platform. That's right. Uh, ISV independent software right. vendor, a kind of old term, even Adam last year, oh, they're ISVs, we're the cloud. No, well, well, next gen cloud's about this next step function changeover where you start right. to see this super cloud I, capabilities where it's not just, it's Amazon plus yeah. a platform. And I think Major. you guys are, yeah. are a highlight of that and we point to that and say, no, that's super cloud. It's not just multiple but, clouds, it's multiple yeah. environments. That's right. Ecosystems, I think those partners have, have really gone all in because of three main reasons. One, security. Nitro really is a premise of security first across the, the infrastructure. Really resiliency and, and availability. If you can't run uh, and you have an ecosystem of that size, you're not going to do well. And, and then third, the way that we treat uh, all of our customers and partners from a engin deep engineering standpoint of yeah. being cooperative, just like what we've done yeah. with VMware, that's what allows them to yeah. flourish. Yeah, and I think super cloud is Amazon Web Services. You got super chips, you got super apps. I mean, AI is essentially just, I mean, what inference is going to do for AI is going to be uh, uh, game changing. I talked about this, Adam, on my exclusive, and I posted it yesterday. Inference is the new killer app. It's going to be a feature that's right. That always is going to be yeah. game changing. Training, you train once like a sandbox. Yeah. There's going to be some cost to that, but as companies get their own models that become their intellectual property, mm -hmm. the inference from that, whether it's an edge device or mm -hmm. core data model, this is going to be the operator's dream because then you have to just set the guardrails up for the platform engineering. That's right. And once you get the platform engineering up, then the AIs can do its work. Mm -hmm. But if there's no data, and that's why I think the storage thing's compelling because you now set the table this is why the disaggregated storage yeah. is interesting because now you set the table for Gen AI. And I think it's, it's amazing where we have decoupled storage from compute and so these can follow their own streams of innovation independently. I think with this, uh, you know, we were the earliest adopters of Nitro back when, yeah. many, many <laughs> years ago. We were the first workload to run on, uh, on, on Nitro, the first real workload. It's come a long way, yeah. it's super secure, we have yeah. jointly engineered right. this together. We're now entering a new generation of, uh, yeah. of uh, innovation, I feel, with this fourth gen and then really unlocking the vastness of the x86 and many other platforms that AWS has with Nitro, and really delivering VMware everywhere yeah. uh, with it, those it, platforms. It's a good fit, you, got, you have a great relationship, I've always been a big fan. Fred, what's the vibe internally at AWS right now? Um, I think this reInvent, you're going to see a lot of flexing. Right. In a, not in a, in a br too bragging way, but I think no. AWS has kind of like taken a lot of public criticism for not having AI first when they actually had AI. But, but there's going to be a lot of flexing going on, I think, I, here. So far, it's been I, great. I, I, uh, I won't call it flexing. I, <laughs> I, I'm incredibly excited about yeah. the ground root, the roots engineering work that we've done. And we take a long-term view. Well, we make sure that we put the customer first. Yeah. We're very customer obsessed. And I think you'll see that in all the announcements that we yeah. have. Uh, how to enable our partners and how to enable our customers to build yeah on us just like we have always done before. Very excited about that. The thing that I would say the vibe is, everything is accelerating incredibly fast. Like I said, when we, when we met a few years ago, you think it was fast then. Yeah. It's changing yeah. exponentially in terms of year over year, in terms of what, what yeah. developers and customers can go do with ease. Awesome. So. Guys, thanks for coming on. I think it's going to be a whole nother level, level of change. 
Uh, AI is a gift for the industry, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I think generative AI is going to change the stack. It already has. And again, yeah. when all the hype is gone and who's got what public perception, it's going to come down to price performance. Yes. You know, we're back to the old days of speeds and feeds are it back. Matters. Yeah. It matters. matters, and energy, just stack. energy cost alone. Right. Yeah. The system performance matters. Yeah, system performance, great call out there, and I think that's the system's mindset. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE, congratulations on the continued success. CUBE's coverage here on location at reInvent. I'm John Furrier, part of SuperCloud 5, special edition. Uh, we're staying it up for this week, a ton going on, this is Generative AI week. The battle for AI supremacy is on, and they're in the arena. Amazon's got a great story with the chips and models and the, the new stack emerging is, is here. So we've got all the coverage for you. SiliconAngle.com, thecube.net. We'll be back on location after this short break. <laughs>